I just read. Your, your impenitent heart. See, your, your stubbornness, your obstinance towards God. You despise the riches. You despise his providential blessings, the rain, the sun shining. Just like in a, you could go out a day is beautiful and it's warm and it's pleasant outside. Well, the person living in their sin enjoys that as much as the person walking in righteousness. Because why? Because like it says, God sends that on the good and the bad, extending his hand, not willing that any should perish. See, wrath has not been uh, diverted. It's deferred to a later date. It's yet to come. And no evil deed is going to be left unpunished. And all things are naked and open to his eyes, to whom we much give an account. And he's going to render to each one according to their deeds, good or evil. That's what the scriptures teach. And that's not what's being taught in your phony churches and by these phony pundits out here on the internet that are offering the advocacy of 1 John 1, 9 and chapter 2, that you can easily confess your sins and pick up where you left off. Well, folks, that is just not the case. That is not the case. God is going to judge these sins. In fact, the judgment is already on our nation. Just like it says in Luke 13, do you, where he talks about the, the Tower of Siloam that fell on the people and they perished. And Jesus told them right out from the beginning in the first few verses, do you suppose that these Galatians were worse sinners than any other because they suffered these things? I tell you, no. Unless you repent, you shall likewise perish. So you think that the Muslims over there that have perished in the recent disasters at Mecca were worse sinners than those in your churches that are getting a pass because of this cheap grace they preach? No, they're not any worse. They're in the same boat. Just like the professed Christians that are hollering and screaming and risking their jobs and their livelihood against this same-sex marriage. And they go out there and get in the public eye and they get their five minutes of fame in before the cameras. It's the same hypocrisy he's talking about here. You think that homosexuality is any worse than the drunkards and the porn watchers in your churches? I say no. Unless you all repent, you will likewise perish. Certainly homosexuality and same-sex marriage is an abominable unto God. Certainly. Like I said, a na this nation has turned into Sodom with the leaders that we have now, if you want to even call them that. These people are sold to Satan. There couldn't be four or five good men left in politics that would stand up for principle. But nevertheless, do you think the, the drunks that are getting a pass in your church and the porn watchers that are going to Promise Keepers once every couple of months, they're okay because that's more acceptable to you than the same-sex marriage or the homosexuality. That's, that's, that's just reprehensible. Well, agreed, it is reprehensible, but you're the biggest hypocrite of all. You tell us, judge not, judge not all the time. It's not a works, judge not all the time. We post that on our blogs because we call out these things. We, we call it like it is and point the finger to repentance as the only way out of these things. But we don't have the beam in our eye like you do. You're judging these people harshly the homosexual and the same-sex marriage, and say, well, we can't abide with that, and I'll even risk my job if necessary. Well, I commend you for that. But then again, the hypocrisy of the beam in your own eye, when you're confronted about your sins, what do you say? What was the first thing out of that clerk of court's mouth when, they were confronted, when she was confronted about her own sins? Well, nobody's perfect. Not a victorious uh, testimony. Be Always be ready to give a an account for the hope that is in you, like Peter says. No, not a victorious testimony that, yeah, that was my former life. I was a wretch. I was those things. Now I'm no longer. Now I've been cleansed and purged, and I'm walking in righteousness and holiness. No, no, it was nobody's perfect. Well, if nobody's perfect, what about the people you're condemning and won't, won't grant a marriage license or don't want to be associated with in your so-called churches? What about them? Aren't they born that way too? Isn't that what they teach in your church? That you're born that way? You can't help it? you got this inbred sin in you and malady? Well, that's exactly what they say. Even science is even telling them they're born that way. They can't help it. See, the chickens have come home to roost, folks, on the professed church. They're going to get called out on these things, and they're not going to have a leg to stand on. Because why? Because they've been preaching this, you're born that way and you can't help it, and a cheap grace, and everything's forgiven in advance. They've been doing that for generations. 
as long as I've been alive and beyond that, for, that's for sure what I've learned. So they don't have any, any place to stand in pointing the finger at anything that's going on until they, judgment begins with them. I hate to say judgment begins with the house of God because they're not the house of God. They're the den of thieves, as Jesus would call them. But see, that's what's happened. They'll condemn these people. Well, yeah, the tower fell on them. Yeah, the crane fell on the people at Mecca, and a bunch of them got killed in the stampede. Well, yeah, God got them. He's got them. And preachers are saying that from the pulpit. These phony preachers are saying that type of stuff without even thinking of the hypocrisy in the beam in their own eye with the drunks and the perverts and the porn watchers and the incest and everything that's going on right under their nose. They know it's going on. They won't do anything about that. They won't call those people to repentance. Why? Well, you got an advocate with the Father. Why? That's why. See, what makes you a Christian and the homosexuals and the perverts out there not Christians? Well, I believe in you. I received Jesus. They didn't. Well, then all they got to do is receive Jesus. I'm surprised somebody didn't come into that lady's office there and say, well, Lord, if you receive Jesus, can we get a marriage license then? I wonder what she would have said. You know, I've asked pastors that in emails about if they would conduct same-sex marriages in their churches. And I've, I've had several affirmative responses. I had one that sent me an application saying anybody can get married in our church. These are local churches here, folks. I know people that go to those churches in my community thinking that they're preaching the truth. They don't know what's going on. Or, or do they know what's going on and they don't care? That's probably more like it. So what's the difference between the drunks and everybody else in that church in grant, granting this type of an abomination to go on? Just go for the whole, the whole thing. You think your 501 status, tax-free, is going to exempt you with a religious exemption? By no means. Again, like Jesus said, no. No, it's not. You can take your religious exemption, but is it going to hold up in court again when our own Supreme Court, the abomination of desolation called our Supreme Court, has already said it's the law of the land? Well, by no means. And that's what's going to happen. That's why I say the chickens have come home to roost on you people. You're going to have to own up or shut up. That's really what's going to happen to you folks. So you're going to have to make that stand or fall with the rest of them. And you can't have it both ways. You can't have all this filth going on in your church. Everybody's filthy rags and wretched man and a chief of sinners while you're condemning these other folks that were also born that way, according to your theology. You see what I mean? You've painted yourself into a corner, so to speak. Like the old joke, you see the old guys painting themselves into the corner and then they wondered what to do. Well, this is no joke. You've done it. You've hamstringed yourself that you have no way out. You've got the whole thing wrapped up in this nice, neat little ball. Unconditional pardon that you grant to anybody, even if they repent or not or forsake their sin. Even though it says in the scriptures, and even, even some of you quote Proverbs 28, he who covers his sins shall not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them shall find mercy. Can't you see what that says? What part of that don't you understand? What part of that don't you get? He said, confess. That, everybody's talking about confess. 1 John 1, 9. Confess. 1 John, no. Forsake. Or you won't find any mercy. Just like, just, like I, just like the prophet said in Isaiah 55. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. Then he'll find some pardon. Let him get clean. Let him go through a broken repentance. Let him wash his hands as sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament, mourn, and weep. That's what should have been happening when the phony pope preaching at the, at the phony congress in there this past week. Is anybody, anybody fallen on their face before God? No. No, it was just more of the same abomination unto God. Preaching world religion and world government and all the same things that's going to lead the whole world into per perdition so the false prophet, I'm not saying he's Antichrist or the false prophet, but he's certainly a type of the Antichrist and a type of the false prophet, as spoken of in Revelation 13. A type of the two-headed monster, the beast. Yeah, we got Protestantism and Catholicism going down the same road to destruction. That's what we got. 
So is anybody lament, mourn, and weep, and fallen on their face, and forsaken their sins, and come and clean before God of all the filth and degradation that they've been involved in? No, this nation is a culture of immorality. The churches are a 